Okay, let's talk about University City. Now, this is another interesting topic here. We did a podcast, gosh, maybe two months ago or so, where we talked about how Mira Mesa is going to radically increase in size, like roughly double in size. And people in Mira Mesa were really freaked out about this future vision, a 30-year plan in Mira Mesa to, to roughly double housing. And we're talking multi-housing multi units, apartment complexes. They were even talking about a gondola in, in Mira Mesa. Well, now University City has a similar plan. And this is just being rolled out. It hasn't been formally approved, but they're now talking about putting twice the number of people into University City. And you're thinking, okay, where? what's University City? And this is an interesting thing, because I always thought of University City as a triangle, right? You know, it's kind of bordered on the 5 freeway and the 805 freeway and the 52 freeway. And I think it's roughly speaking, it's the zip code 92122. But remember, then they 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 announced what they called a golden triangle. And I think that's the upper part of the triangle. I think that's 5805 and La Jolla Village Drive, you know, right by UTC. And all of that business, all of those business buildings, high rise. To me, that's that's UTC, or sometimes people called it the golden triangle. Well, apparently in this plan to double more than double housing in University City, University City to, to city planners actually goes quite a bit further. I was surprised to hear this because they said that it's bounded on the north by Sorrento Valley and the Los Penasquitos Lagoon. That makes sense. That's kind of the tip of the triangle. Marine Corps Air Station Miramar uh, and 805 on the east and 52 on the south, but on the western border it's more complex. It includes Highway 5, but in some cases, it includes North Torrey Pines Road and La Jolla Farms, um, you know, right up into the Pacific Ocean in parts. And I don't usually think of that part of, of that area around UCSD as part of University City. Now, they're, they're saying UCSD itself isn't part of University City, but according to this, the city planners, if you're talking about that area where Genesee and um, Torrey Pines kind of intersect. You know, there's a lot of biotech firms. You could probably even include Salk Institute, um, the Glider Port, La Jolla Farms, which are those really wealthy, you know, high-end homes that are in between UCSD and the ocean. I've always thought of that as La Jolla, but apparently that's part of the university city footprint. So what they're talking about doing here is more than doubling it. Um, and it's the first time they've updated this plan in University City since 1987. So they're, they're going to put in high-rise um, housing as tall as 10 stories or more that would be encouraged in five focus areas in University City. And then on top of that, several of the existing one-story shopping plazas, you know, or strip malls, um, would be transformed or rezoned to be mixed use. So it might be starting to look a little bit like the shopping center um, off of Via La Jolla, you know, where there is housing and, and commercial kind of all blended together. They're going to be building more of that in University City as well. And they're talking about, you know, updating the roads, upgrading bike paths. They, they got a whole bunch of ideas to completely reimagine the entire community of University City. And they put this blueprint, you know, together, and it's scheduled to be approved by the city council sometime in 2023. They haven't really announced that yet, but this is like a pretty bold view of the future. Um, and what's interesting too, I, this is a kind of bit of a tangent, but you know, we're talking about Mira Mesa radically expanding, University City rad radically expanding. These two communities are both in San Diego City Council District 6, which San Diego officials call an Asian empowerment district because 40% of the residents are of Asian descent. Wow, I didn't realize it was that high. You know, I knew that it was going to be higher than other parts of San Diego County, but 40% Asian in Mira Mesa and University City. 
yeah, it kind of makes sense. I mean, just kind of anecdotally of people I know that live in those communities. Um, but wow, uh, that's that's something. And this whole area is about to go through both communities, a radical transformation. Um, so there's, of course, been huge opposition to this from the locals. And isn't this kind of a common story? You know, we, I, I live in the city of Poway. We've been going through our own growth issues here. Um, with more housing and more development, and there's construction going on all around us in Poway, and the local residents objecting, expressing their concerns, in some cases being really vocal, really angry about a lot what's going on. The same thing is happening in University City. So there was an op-ed that was in the um, in the Union Tribune by Bonnie Kutch, and she's a retired public relations professional who's lived in the southern part of University City. And she said that University City is one of those San Diego neighborhoods where everyone living here feels like they belong, regardless of age, ethnicity, religion, or class. So she she's really, you know, enjoys University City the way it is, you know, because that's what she bought. That's what she bought into. And she's really worried about this change. She said, um, you know, the proposed University City community plan update could turn community into a congested, unrecognizable metropolis by more than tripling the housing density from 27,000 existing units to 83,000. Wow, 83,000. Um, and she's objecting, saying the city has not provided a really a, a good solution for traffic gridlock, for people getting in and out of their homes. She thinks Riding your bike to the store or taking the bus to the store is kind of utopian, especially if you have to schlep around, you know, 40 pound bags of fertilizer when you're fixing your, your yard and your garden and your, and your home. So she's objecting to a lot of this and she's not alone. I mean, there's a lot of university city uh, residents that have expressed that. Now, if, if you've driven around university city, I, I, and granted, I used to live in university city when I was a student at UC San Diego. Um, we had a condo in the Genesee Highlands area. Um, and then I had friends of mine that lived off of Governor Drive and they had rented, there was like four guys rented a three bedroom house out there. It's a very suburban, single family residential area in, in a lot of parts of University City with housing that was built probably in the 1970s or 1980s with people that have nice front yards and big open streets and street parking and just a really kind of cool suburban vibe. You know, the world's changing and, and all of these communities are trying to come to grips with how they're going to handle all of these changes. Now, um, one of the, of her objections, she said that mo you know, the UC San Diego students, she thinks they're building more in university city because UC San Diego is failing to build enough uh, residential property for the dorms on campus. And she's right on that point. UCSD has been radically expanding the campus and the enrollment, but they haven't kept up with the housing element of it. And that's why it's there's a lot of freshmen that should be living in the dorms that got bumped. And they're like out in the open market looking for housing. And some of them having to commute 20, 30 miles a day to go to UCSD. So UCSD is going through this radical transformation. Now, they've got a lot of plans on the books and a lot of construction underway to build more housing on campus. Will that satisfy the majority of the needs of students? Hopefully. Now, granted, not all students will live on campus. I lived on campus for my first two years, and I lived off campus for the, my, my final three years. I was on the five-year plan at UCSD. Um, and I think that generally is going to be true. but as housing is much more expensive off campus, you know, maybe they they have a vision at UCSD to have housing for your entire time at UC, as a student on campus. You know, that's an interesting angle there. But you see San Diego students still live in the University City area. A lot of them do. Um, they are either renting places. In some cases, there are wealthy families that buy condos for their kid as an investment. They have a place to live. And then in five years or four years after they graduate, they can either sell the property, at, you know, and make some money or, or just transition it into an income uh, property. But 
in this article, she went on to say that most UC San Diego students I'm familiar with in the South University City area use cars since taking a bus or trolley to and from campus is a 45-minute adventure each direction. And I believe that's true. Now, granted, you know, they're, they're building more of these trolleys and they're trying to get more people on the trolleys to make transportation more efficient. But my understanding is, is that line is coming up like through the five freeway. And then it kind of goes through UCSD and wraps around to UTC. But is it going to start coming further south down Genesee? I don't know. I don't know what that plan is, but that's a fair objection. I mean, there's going to be a lot of students that are trying to get on campus and expecting them to take a bus may not be realistic because public transportation is is kind of a mess, but I know they're trying to fix that too. And they, there's a lot of work that needs to be done there. And frankly, I question a lot of the public transportation initiatives that are being planned in the county because I think, this is my vision, is that I think autonomous cars are going to radically transform the way people commute, the way people use transportation to get around. I think when we have automated cars, we're going to have these pods that are going to be traveling around the city that you can hop in and hop off. You can hail like you're hailing an Uber. And these automated driverless cars are going to pick you up, drop you off. And when you go longer distances, they're going to computer controlled work in a swarm so they can travel efficiently as a group and then individual pods will peel off as necessary. To me, that's the vision because public transportation on rail, you're stuck on a track and that track don't move. That track doesn't get you necessarily where you want to go. Busing gives you more flexibility, but still doesn't get you point A to point B. So but right now, people are dependent on their cars, and that means you got to have a place to park the car at home and a place to park the car at your destination, which creates a whole other set of problems that I think driverless cars are going to be able to resolve. But yeah, this is a fair point. When there's more housing going in an area, there's going to be traffic congestion, and there needs to be a solution to that. Now, another part of the solution is more people are working from home. That's good, although now companies are starting to demand that their employees come in to the office. But these are all legitimate concerns that are going on. But overall, I think the city is on the right track. Overall, I think expanding University City, expanding Mira Mesa, even housing expansion in my hometown of Poway is the right thing to do because housing is so damn expensive. They need to have more, they need to have more housing units. And when they do, there's going to be more competition and there's going to be lower prices or at least a, a, a dampening of prices or a, a smaller increase in prices. Hopefully, in many cases, a lowering of prices. Now, one of the objections to the people in University City are saying, well, yeah, you're going to build these high-rise apartments and they're going to be like 4000 bucks a month. You know, that's true. I, I bet you they will be that much because there's people that will move in that work in that area that have high paying jobs that can easily afford that. And some people would say, well, that doesn't solve the housing crisis. Well, it does. OK, on, on one level, it helps those businesses and those employees that want to be able to have a place near where they work. So those and, and these are people on the higher end of the income scale. For them, I mean, they had trouble finding housing anywhere near where they worked. Now, at least there's going to be a lot of options in that Golden Triangle area or really close by. But the other part of this is the part that is unseen. And this is the part that I think people don't get. Is when you build brand spanking new housing, it's going to be expensive. Well, I think we everyone agrees to that. It's going to be, it's not going to be cheap. But what happens is, is that as people are upwardly mobile, as people upgrade their life, they move and they get better housing. Perhaps you've done that in your life. 
You know, you when you're a, a teenager or let's say you're a young adult in your 20s, you don't live in a really million dollar house. You know, usually you're renting an apartment with two or three of your friends and you're just trying to figure out a way to get by. And as your income grows, you move up, you go, you get nicer places, bigger places, more modern places. So if we build more higher end homes like this, or just housing in general, not necessarily only on the high end, but housing in general, more people are going to move up into those nicer homes because they're going to be very attractive. And that will free up a lot of the housing on the lower end of the spectrum where first time renters, first time home buyers, people with lower income will have a lot more options on the low end. But people are sticking in that low end now, even with higher income jobs, because the pricing is so crazy and the availability is so low for better quality housing units. So the whole market is just completely distorted because there hasn't been enough construction. There hasn't been enough development to keep up with the demand. So that's why I'm generally supportive of this. I'm also, um, I'm supportive of the expansion in University City, of Mira Mesa, of Poway. We're gonna talk about Escondido in just a moment. Um, this is ultimately good for our economy. It's good for the people of San Diego. Now, if you live there in University City in your idyllic, you know, three bedroom, two bath house with a nice front yard and that kind of single family home neighborhood vibe, are you going to like the change? Probably not. Change is hard. People don't like to be disrupted. I get that. People in my hometown of Poway are really upset about a lot of the development because it's so disruptive. And there's changes in, in new people coming in. There's more traffic, all, all of this going on. It has a big impact. But you know what? New housing is good for the people that are moving in because they got a place to live. <laughs> you know, we're talking about there, San Diego wants to make housing a right. Well, which I think is crazy. But if they want to at least provide more housing units, more roofs over people's heads, which I think is the right idea the right aspiration. The way you do that is make it easier to build housing. And when you make it easier to build housing, then more people have roofs over their head and you have more supply in the market, more of a competitive nature and prices begin to relax. And I think that's critical. Um, gosh, I mean, there's so much in this article, which is just crazy. The, the University City wants to double the number of housing units from 27,000 to 57,000. <laughs> that's a lot. I mean, that's a, I mean, it's going to completely change. And, and now imagine if in 30 years down the road, Mira Mesa is re rebuilt, University City is rebuilt. I mean, what's next? Claremont, you know, that Bayho area, Morena Boulevard. I mean, Mission Valley is already going through radical changes. Then what? Sarah Mesa? That would be a, a pretty ripe area to reform as well. I mean, San Diego, the city of San Diego, all of the neighborhoods in the city of San Diego, all are kind of like suburbs of downtown. Tierra Santa, San Carlos, City Heights, um, University City, Mira Mesa, Rancho Penasquitos. I mean, these are all part of the city of San Diego, but really they're like suburban cities. Well, you know what? San Diego is getting more urban. San Diego is growing up. San Diego is no longer just a, a sleepy little fishing village along the ocean. It's no longer just a military town. I mean, there's a lot of really high-end businesses are here. Biotech companies, computer science, telecom, you know, plus all the tourism, plus all the military. I mean, this is a vibrant community that is going through a growth phase and it's making a lot of people really angry, really upset. Um, so yeah, they're talking about University City would double the number of jobs from 85,000 to more than 150,000 jobs. So 
you know, where are they going to build all this? I think a lot of it is going to be, like they said, in that North Torrey Pines area, which is, I'm, I'm making an assumption here, but it's kind of like Salk Institute, Glider Port, that part of North Torrey Pines, maybe a little bit further north than where Genesee intersects, possibly, but it's that zone. Plus, there's a lot they're talking about building along Eastgate Mall. And frankly, at Eastgate Mall, there's a lot of empty space there, especially when you get on the other side of the 805. So I, 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 technically that wouldn't be University City, but there's a lot of actual space to build there as well. And they've already built a lot of high rises there for businesses. I think they're gonna build more business buildings there. There's gonna be a lot more housing that's gonna be integrated with more of this mixed use, which then creates more walkable communities. But it's gonna be a rocky road getting there because the world is changing. But you know, every major city has gone through this. I mean, you can look at, um, old historic photos of San Diego when Mission Valley was cow pasture. And then, oh my God, they built San Diego Stadium there in the late 60s. And that was a radical thing. And now look at Mission Valley. And you can look at old fashioned pictures from San Francisco. You know, I mean, San Francisco, even in the earthquake of 1906, was a very urban city, but Roll the clock back further in the 1800s, it wasn't <laughs> at all. Um, Los Angeles has gone through a lot of this. I mean, it's we're getting bigger. Gosh, when when I moved to San Diego in 1982, my hunch is is that the population in the county is probably at least a third less, if not 50 percent less than it is now. I mean. There's been a, just a boom of people. It's just exploded. And these communities are trying to catch up, but they're going to have challenges in doing it. Um, now, the critics, of course, they're upset too because the libraries, we can't have enough. There's The libraries can't handle these people, they say. And the parks and the fire stations, the fire stations, they're going to have to build more of those. They're going to have to expand the libraries. Now, granted, the whole concept of libraries, I think we can argue a little bit about as well. Because if you really want to check out books, there's a lot more efficient ways to do that. I, mean, I think a lot of what the information in libraries, a lot of that comes from online sources as well. I mean, I've often thought if, if you're just talking about providing a place to be able to provide books to the public, you could build a model that was kind of like Netflix when they had the DVDs, where they could be shipped to you and you ship them back. But, you know, people's vision of libraries is a lot more than that. It's more of a community center, a place for gatherings and events. And, okay, then that's more than just a book place. But in that case, yeah, they're going to have to build more of these. They're going to have to expand them. The world is changing. Um, what else did they talk about in this article? Eh, it's, I think I covered most of it. But it's just, to me, very, very intriguing that University City is going to follow a plan similar to that of Mira Mesa. And we're already seeing, you know, out near Rancho Penasquitos, that whole Merge 56 area, there's been development there. You know, we've had the development in Carmel Valley that's been happening over the last 20-something years. Um, you know, Poway is going through a radical transformation along Poway Road and at the farm in Poway. Many other communities are dealing with this. We, we've talked about housing that's going in in Imperial Beach, housing that's going in La Mesa. It's incredible the things that are changing. And we're going to talk about Escondido next. Before we do, 